So here's our file copy program again using the standard I.O. library this time. It looks very similar to the one we already looked at. In this case, our file descriptors are of type pointer to file. Here we're opening our files using fopen. Notice the use of a text string to indicate the open mode, either read in that case or write in that case. The main copy loop looks much as before. We're reading in one item of B size bytes each time around the loop and writing it back out to the output file and closing the files when we're done. So there's really not much difference here between this and the low level example that we looked at earlier. Now I was thinking of demonstrating the compilation and running of this program but frankly it looks pretty much exactly the same as it did before with the low level version. Now, one of the differences between the low-level I.O. stuff like read and write and the standard library I.O. stuff like fread and fwrite is that fwrite, for example, doesn't dive down into the kernel every time you call it. It accumulates the output into a buffer and only troubles the kernel when it's got a worthwhile amount of data to write. And under some circumstances, this can make a big difference to the performance. Here's a program called rawio.c. You'll see that it opens a file called rawio.out. Then it picks up a couple of parameters from the command line. I'll talk about this in detail in module four. Uh, the first is the size of the blocks that we're going to write. And the second is the number of blocks. The heart of the program is this little loop here, writing out the appropriate number of blocks of the appropriate size. So let's build this. And let's run it and time its execution. Here, I'm going to write a 10 megabyte file one byte at a time. This is of course a stupid way to write a file, but I'm trying to make a point as you'll see. Now I won't edit out the pause here because uh, I want you to see how long this really does take. And we see that the time command has reported the amount of time spent in user space, which isn't very much, uh, the amount of time spent in kernel space, which is uh, dominant, and the total elapsed time. OK, now let's look at the same program using the standard I.O. library routines. It's basically the same code, except that we're using fopen to open the file and fwrite to write to it. So let's compile this. And let's time it as we did for the other one. Again, I'm going to write a 10 megabyte file, one byte at a time. So we see what a 30 fold reduction in the overall execution time and a massive reduction in the amount of time spent executing in kernel space. Now I've chosen a rather ridiculous limiting case here of writing a large file one byte at a time deliberately to make a point that there's an overhead involved in making a system call. Let's rerun the programs using a more sensible buffer size. We'll do the raw I.O. one first. So here we're writing 100 blocks of 10 kilobytes and we already see that the overall time is dramatically reduced. 
Let's do the same for the buffered I.O. version. Again, the time has dramatically reduced. Uh, the buffered I.O. version, though, is still faster. And I suppose the moral of the story is don't do your I.O. in tiny little pieces.